Thank you, Sam. I want to welcome all of you here to this uh, um, joint uh, worship um, service today with the four churches. I'm glad all of you could join us here. Um, do want to just uh, one announcement that's in, the, in there is, uh, is announcements on the Good Friday service. There will be a Good Friday service at the St. Ansgar United Methodist Church at 630 and also Eden Presbyterian Church at 630 tomorrow night. So you're invited to join either of those worship services. Let us now have a moment of meditation. Be still and know God is God. Be still and know God is. Be still and know God. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Will you join me in the call to worship as you can respond um, with a soft whisper? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. And let us pray. Most merciful God, we, your church, confess that often our spirit has not been that of Christ, where we have failed to love one another as he loves us, where we have pledged loyalty in him with our lips and then betrayed, deserted, or denied him. Forgive us, we pray, and by your spirit make us faithful in every time of trial through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Who is in the position to condemn? Only Christ. But Christ suffered and died for us, was raised from the dead and ascended on high for us, and continues to intercede for us. Believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Let us join in our opening hymn, and this is gonna be a hymn We'll do verse 1 and 2, and then we'll have an Old Testament reading, and then we'll ring, read 3 and 4, a reading, and then verse 5. So let us sing, Jesus, Jesus.
Old Testament reading comes from Exodus, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month you are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in portions to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A year old male, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembly congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. You shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorsteps and the lintel of the house in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb the same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is a Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the household where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This, this day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Let us uh, softly sing the next two verses. Our gospel reading is coming from the Gospel of John. If for those who are able, you please stand for this reading. It is taken from the 13th chapter, verses 1 to 17, and verses 31b to 35. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. And then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet 
and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And for this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. And after he had washed their feet and had put his robe on and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you sh also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. And verse 31. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And let us sing verse 5. seated. So for those who don't know me, I am the past Reverend Dixie Lauby. I serve part-time at Osage United Church of Christ and also at Eden Presbyterian Church, and I thank you for being able to share the pulpit with Sue tonight and being able to bring you just a short message about Monday, Thursday, and the meeting, and if you received the Enterprise paper, you probably already kind of know what my thoughts are on what any of that is, but I just kind of want to refresh some of our thoughts on what does it mean to have someone wash our feet, and what does it mean for us to take communion? You know, the G Jesus told the disciples all that had to happen, and knowing that Judas was going to betray him, Jesus still loved them anyway. He loved them to the end. If you caught that in the scripture, that's what it says, to the end. And I sit here and I think, who loves us so much to the end besides God in our daily life? I think we can probably name that our parents do and our aunts and uncles and our brothers and sisters. We may think that our friends do, but sometimes our friends may be a Judas in our life once in a while. We also know that God knows us completely. 
He knows the sins we have committed and the ones we will yet to commit, and he still loves us. That should excite us. The prelude this evening was amazing. And I think for some of us who haven't been able to just absorb those 15 minutes of music, wow, thank you. Because I was sitting there listening to some of those familiar tunes and they were to a jazz tune and I'm thinking, it's Monday, Thursday, we don't do that. <laughs> But we can, because what I notice in scripture, when we get to the communion part, I really think Jesus and the disciples were sitting back going, talking about everything and anything and excited about the ministry that they were doing. And then all of a sudden Jesus leans back or comes back to the table and says, I got to tell you about that. And the mood probably became very somber at that point. But before that, as the disciples were walking into that upper room, Jesus took off his robe and he tied a towel around his waist and he knelt down and washed their feet. How many of you have had your feet washed by someone? Only a handful of you. That act that Jesus did became that ultimate model servant for us. Because washing the guests' feet were for the household servants. They needed to do that. But Jesus did it. He became, as interpreters say, one of the lowliest slaves and washed their feet. He showed us how God is willing to serve and get in the dirt with us. And we, as his followers, must be willing to do as well. This washing of the disciples' feet was to extend that mission on earth. He didn't do it so that the disciples would just get along. He did it so that the mission could be complete. Because he knew it was bigger. Because these men, and I'm going to include women, were going to go out and move into the world so to serve God, to serve each other, and all the people whom they took the message of salvation to. And we are those people. Without those disciples, we wouldn't have that message. And we really should be stooping over and washing each other's feet tonight, but be, there's something called a pandemic, so we won't do that. But when you came in, you should have gotten a little baggie with a hand wipe in it. And I want you to take a moment. If you're sitting by a spouse, you can wash your spouse's hands, but if you're sitting by yourself, take it out and wash your hands. Slowly, methodically, however you want, because I still have a little bit to say here. <sighs> and for those of you who are watching from home, we are live streaming on our Facebook page. So those of you who are watching at home, I want you to grab the closest thing you have to a wipe, whether it's a dish towel or a, a kitchen towel, and do the same thing. Wash your hands. Wash your husband's or wives' or children's hands. Because that's how it feels when somebody else does that simple act for you. When I was serving a church in La Crosse, Wisconsin, this was about 12 years ago, I attended a conference meeting at Pilgrim Center Camp, which is in, yep, I just lost the name, Ripon, Wisconsin. 
And on the last day of that closing worship, the leaders of that conference, there was five of them, they lined up on the sidewalk. It was summertime, so it was a nice day. They lined up on the sidewalk with five different stations. Each one had a bucket of water. And they knelt down and literally told us all to take our shoes off. Now, if you've ever been at camp, it's dusty, it's dirty, it's hot, it's sweaty. And you're like, eh, yeah, I don't want them to watch my feet. But it's the most humbling experience to have another adult down on your, their feet and their knees taking a washcloth. Each one, everyone had a different one and washed your feet before you went into chapel. For me, that was powerful. I've had a lot of powerful moments, but that was probably the most powerful one I've had because I was moved to tears because I hadn't really experienced anything like that, especially from a complete stranger. And I believe that is part of that love that Jesus wants us to go and show. And that is what we're to show throughout the journey. Because when Jesus broke open that bread, he shared it with his friends. And he also told them to go and do likewise. And then when he took the cup, he said the same thing. There are times when I think Jesus and the disciples were just taking it on it all in. And he shared this experience so that they could understand and take it in literally through eating and drinking so that they understood what was going to come. So when Sue comes up and reads that 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26, I encourage you just to close your eyes, listen to the words, maybe figure out if you can put an image in your head. I have a hard time with that, but maybe you can. And listen to what happened at that table so that when we come tonight, we're ready to participate in that Last Supper on this Holy Thursday. Thanks be to God. Amen. The New Testament reading is 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this is the cup, is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the, the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us bow our heads in prayer. O oh, gracious and loving God, we are so thankful this, for this night to be able to gather, to gather together as, as uh, four different congregations to come together to remember that last supper, to remember that last night when Jesus was betrayed and what he taught us in the hand washing and the foot washing and how intimate that is and how, how much he became a servant and asks us to do the same. As we gather together now um, to partake in communion, we are, know your presence is with us and that we know that you are with us and go with us and help us to remember, to remember that night that he gave himself. We pray all of this in the name of your Son and our Savior who taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is I Love You, Lord. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Will you join me in the great thanksgiving? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. The night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when supper was over, he took the cup. and gave thanks to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come on. Come on. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread, bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, 
one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Dear Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have you come forward. Have one person from your household come forward. It'll help with the traffic and take enough communion elements back to your seat. And in the back of your um, sanctuary, or back of your um, bulletin, there is instructions on how to take it as you take the communion elements home with you. We'll have the prayer of thanksgiving before you leave, and then you can um, share that at home with one another. And will you join me in our prayer of thanksgiving? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And if you are able, you please stand for our blessing. 
This is a blessing that was written by the Reverend Shelley Williams. This night is our calling to go out into the world, scattered to the ends of the earth, to love as Christ love and serve in the name of Christ. It is our calling to remember, even in our darkest hour, who we are. We remember that Christ is always with us. And we remember that on this night, we were taught how to love. And on this night, eternity begins and the fullness of God's reign begins to spill into our lives. So go into the world to give yourself for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Go into the world and love in the name of the one who loved you until the end. It all begins and ends and begins again with love. This is the story. Amen. <laughs>